Jim Crow didn't evaporate, didn't disappear after um, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed. There was still some residue and it still persists to this day. So it's not ancient history and it, it's, it's one of those things that the people that experienced it, that lived through it can actually talk to you about it. Seeing work um, of this time during segregation and Jim Crow, it it um, it brings a, a, a different spotlight onto you know how we connect to that time. Even though you know some have said, "Oh, it's over. We passed this." No, no, we haven't. <laughs> you know, and and um, so how do we deal with it now in this you know where we are now in 2024? This show is so significant because, you know, just looking at some of the artists that are included and some of the African-American artists who um, really have achieved a certain level of acclaim now, but at the time, you know, um, they're probably like artists that to, of today where they're just trying to talk about what's going on with them, what's, what's happening in their environment, what's happening in their lives, what's happening in the lives of the people around them. As we see their work and we hear their voices, we also connect or can connect because so much of what they talked about is still happening now. You know, segregation and the Jim Crow era aren't so distantly in the past as some people might like to believe or want us to believe and you, they still affect us and there's lasting remnants that doesn't just go away in a generation especially if that generation is still with us. I've talked to people about shopping over there at the arcade and how they would have to use the restroom in the alleys because they couldn't use them in the in the stores. Jim Crow in essence was a very in your face way of demonstrating that despite the fact that African Americans had been freed by the 13th Amendment, that they were still very much second class citizens. It reminded me of my family. My family's from Mississippi, most of them, and so my grandparents who were sharecroppers and you know, just kind of that the mentality of walking out and being proud, you know, in your person, regardless of rights being taken away, regardless of, of, of lives being taken, you know, because of injustice and because of terrorism. I think a lot of these works, while they are difficult, and as a Southern Black woman, it, it did kind of take my breath away. The Quartor piece, Marie Hall, you know, Elizabeth uh, Catlett, like those pieces really make you think really make you, for me, they really made me kind of cry, you know, just to kind of see, because you see yourself and you see your family members. I see my grandfather in, you know, an American citizen, like he, he's dressed to the Sunday best and I, I can definitely see my grandfather in that. Just because people live at the same time and even live in the same area, Sometimes people are having very different experiences. A show like this really helps us see those different um, perspectives, those different um, experiences, and those different voices and expressions of those voices, which I think really helps us know them, know um, those times in which they live, but that also helps us know ourselves as well. If we have, you know, everybody's perspective, then we really, um, really get a sense of the full story or a better sense of the fuller story. And we still see elements of it as we look around today, if we are honest with ourselves. Um, the poor schools are in a certain part of the city and they're not there by accident. None of this stuff is really by accident. Yeah, I think for a show like this, it's really important for audiences, young and old, to kind of sit and reflect with, you know, how history has affected them and how it affects us today. And, you know, for me, it, it really called into question what we think of when we think of the South. As a practitioner and an educator as well, um, these pieces are important for students to see because I think with maybe the age of social media, we kind of get caught up in, in, in um, this, this quickness, um, this, this speed of, 
of gathering information without just kind of sitting still in them um, and knowing that uh, these artists were, were depicting historical events. How do we find connection again in the past, marrying that with the present, and then taking that and moving that forward? Exhibits like these are important because they're somewhat insulated to a lot of the political forces that don't want the stories of this country to be told. Um, Telling the story about Jim Crow and whatever way the artists presented is a way of revealing, um, revealing our stories, revealing our truths. I think it's also helpful for people to see how things were at one point in t time in history, how they are now, and that there, there can continue to be progress. It's also as equally important, I feel, to see you know, in the midst of protest and political climate that we're still finding joy and we're still being able to you know, find dignity in our identities and, and maintain that and that no one can take that sort of humanity away from you.